Good evening, everyone. I would like to bring the October 20th, 21 meeting of the Annaburra Board of School Directors to order. Ms. Caldwell, we have a roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Mr. Fralinger? Here. Ms. Krajewski? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Goldsboro? Here. Ms. Joseph? Here. Ms. Fagan? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Chabon? Here. Mr. Phelps? Here. Mr. Evans, can we have the invocation and pledge? Heavenly Father, please hear our prayer. Bless all schools, colleges, and especially the Annaburg School District. And grant to this board, in their deliberations this evening, the spirit of wisdom, truth, and knowledge. What is undertaken will always be done in charity and in peace, and what we do might be for the benefit of others. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Bless the to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Yes, good evening. Uh, for our student reports, I would like to welcome our high school students who are joining us this evening. We have Grace Hughes as our returning member, and our newest student representative is Farhanaz Askayar. Welcome. Welcome, Grace. Thank you. For the Kindergarten Academy, the children are settling in nicely with the routines of the day and are enjoying being introduced to both pre-K and kindergarten curriculums. The children have been loving music, STEM, and PE classes, and the children are engaged in their learning and having a good time doing it. Glen Olden School students were eager, eager to get back to their routine this past September. They enjoyed seeing friends they did not see every day last year. With that excitement also meant PBIS was in full swing. On Friday, September 10th, our student ambassadors ran a PBIS kickoff where they ran, ran multiple stations to teach various expectations such as cafeteria, hallway, classroom, bathroom, and many more expectations around the school. It was a great day had by all. On Wednesday, September 10th, 22nd, our home and school hosted a Kona Ice fundraiser. The students enjoyed meeting in the recess yard after school and creating their own delicious flavors. It was a big hit, and we look forward to making this a tradition. We closed out the month of September honoring our Courageous Student of the Month recipients. There honestly is not one student in Glen Olden who has not demonstrated courage within the past two years, but September's recipients push their comfort levels a little further, and are not letting anything stand in their way. During the month of October, we are looking to recognize students demonstrating the virtue justice. On Friday, October 8th, the Glen Olden Fire Company visited with our first graders. They learned about fire safety and what to do in an emergency. Our students were able to check out the equipment firefighters wear and use and were able to ask great questions. For Norwood, on Tuesday, September 7, 2021, our regular school year began. It was wonderful to see the students and teachers back and we look forward to a great year. The home and school had a Kona ice truck come to Norwood on Thursday, September 9th as a welcome back to school event. On Friday, September 10th, we celebrated our students who turned in their summer reading logs. Students who read over the summer and completed their lab were treated to sherbet and some time outside. We were so proud of our students who read over the summer and are looking forward to continue our reading journey this year. Grades four and five had a meet the instrument night at the high school on Wednesday, September 15th. We have many students signed up and having lessons. Our home and school started Wednesday, September 29th, selling popcorn to our elementary students. Everyone loves the popcorn. Our home and school had their first fundraiser on Saturday, October 2nd. It was the color run, and the students and families had a great day. On Friday, October 8th, the Norwood Fire Company came to see our first graders for fire production. Please keep an eye of Please keep an eye on our new Norwood School LED sign, which is updated frequently to reflect our upcoming events and our announcements. Thanks, Dr. Costa. At Prospect Park, the past several weeks have been very busy here at Prospect Park School. We welcomed our students back to school and in some cases into our school for the first time. It has been wonderful to see so many students back in the building and adjusting to the rigors of the school day, of a full school day. We held our virtual annual open house with tremendous attendance as hundreds of parents and family members joined multiple Zoom meetings with their child's teachers to hear about the great things that are going on at Prospect Park School. 
Our students are making wonderful progress with many new programs and have demonstrated tremendous success as they engage in learning. At Tinicum on September 7th, we welcome back all of our students and stamp staff for the 2021-2022 school year. We are striving for a great year with some of our activities making a comeback. We would like to thank all the custodians that worked very hard to get our building ready. One of our custodians is going to be missed this year. Barry Cunningham retired on October 1st with 30 years of service to the district. Enjoy your retirement, Mr. Barry. On September 10th, our elementary students were rewarded for completing their summer reading galaxy logs with the Hershey Sherbet Cup party. The students had fun reading over the summer and enjoyed their treat when they came back to school. Tinicum's back to school night was held September 28th. After some discussion, it was decided to have a virtual night again, similar to what we did last year. Once we got past a little bit of technical difficulties, the night was a huge success for everyone who attended. At the high school, rehearsals are underway for Interborough's theater, Interboro Theater's Fall Play Check, Please. We have around 60 students participating in different aspects of the production. Mark your calendar for the weekend of November 13th because you're not going to want to miss this comedy. For athletics, the boys' cross-country team has won the Del Val, and the girls' cross-country team will share the Del Val title with Penwood. They will be competing in districts later this month. The girls' field hockey team has clinched the Del Val title. They are undefeated in the Del Val League. The girls' soccer team has also clinched the Del Val League title this year. These teams will be moving on to the playoffs in the following weeks. <coughs> And for the high school spirit, Interborough's homecoming was celebrated the week of October 11th to the 17th. The homecoming football game was held Friday, October 15th at the South Ave at 7 p.m. The homecoming court and float parade were presented at halftime. The Alumni Hall of Fame inductees for the class of 2020 were introduced at the homecoming football game on Friday, October 15th at 6.30 p.m. The Alumni Board had a hospitality tent at the game and invited the newest members and their families to the game and to 39 North following the game. The official luncheon has been moved to the spring because of COVID. And that concludes our report. Thank you both ladies. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, number three, we have the right? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, I would like to present certificates of appreciation from the Pennsylvania School Board Association to Mr. Phelps with 12 years of service and Mr. Evans of eight, with eight years of service to the Interborough School Board. Uh, I would like to thank them and all of our school board members for giving their time and energy to supporting and guiding our schools and students they serve. Their efforts reflect the mission of our schools, ensuring we provide opportunities for our students to be successful. So thank you. I give a speech, but I'm a man of few words. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, number four, Mr. Evans, public comments. Yes, sir. Members of the community are respectfully reminded that with regard to public comments, neither the board nor solicitor will engage in dialogue with the person or persons addressing the board. The board will listen and take all comments, questions, and suggestions under advisement. Where specific answers are requested, community members are invited to telephone, email, or use the postal service to communicate their questions to the superintendent or board president who will respond or have appropriate school district personnel respond. Um, Generally, the board requires that you sign in uh, if you want to speak or make public comment, and um, we also uh, restrict to uh, topics to agenda items, but the board recognizes there may be outstanding issues that uh, are affecting the community and uh, our students, so uh, we're suspending this rule uh, for this meeting and maybe subsequent meetings um, so that people have the opportunity to speak. And um, we do have one person signed in. If anybody else wants to speak but didn't know they had to sign in, then we'll allow them to speak as well. But we ask that they keep their comments to five minutes. All right? Um, and first up is Amy Ferris. Hello, my name is Amy Ferris. I live at 1122 Pennsylvania Avenue in Prospect Park. You may recognize my name and voice as I, as I have been very vocal about you resuming in-person meetings. I'd like to take this time to thank all of you very much for being here tonight. Before I speak on COVID restrictions and inconsistencies, I would like to make a public note. 
The board meeting, I'm sorry, the board minutes online specifically say that if we have questions or comments and would like to speak to a board member to email or call the superintendent or board president who will respond or have someone else respond. I have emailed Mr. Phelps several times, September 15th, September 20th, and October 6th, and was never acknowledged. I know my questions may challenge the school board, and I know that you all have jobs outside of this, but at the same time, you chose to be elected officials, and you have a responsibility to the public to respond to messages. Being you won't answer questions here or have discussions here, you need to be approachable and available to answer the public outside of the meeting. Now my main reason for speaking tonight. I know that you had a lot of voices speaking up about the decision to cancel the homecoming dance this weekend. I'm not here to talk about that. Even though I was very vocal with Mr. Riley on email to my opposition to that decision, I'm actually here to talk about the way it was scheduled in the first place. Are you aware that one mile down the road, Ridley had in-person back to school nights and an incoming, I'm sorry, an inside homecoming dance? They also did not limit how many people could be in attendance to the dance. They did limit it to no outside students, but that is it. It was inside, no limits. I don't see Ridley having to close down due to a massive outbreak. Why are we continuing to live in fall of 2020? Why one mile down the road are they resuming as much normalcy as possible and we are planning outdoor events only and limiting people? We excluded students from pep rally. They all deserve to be in attendance. We limited ticket sales for a dance that they all deserve to attend. And the dance was even scheduled to be outside. I didn't see that the football game had a maximum limit on the attendance. Under what laws and mandates and not opinions are you making these decisions to keep limiting events and holding things outside? Why are we inconsistent with other schools in the neighborhood? Why do our kids and our parents have to pay the price because of these inconsistencies and fears? We need to keep moving on and moving forward. This has gone on long enough, and you can see how much this is wearing on everyone. We are tired of inconsistent restrictions. It is time to join the rest of the communities around us and let us have a school year as close to normal as we can have it. Thank you for your time. At this time, is there anybody else that wants to speak? Sir, would you yeah. please? State your name and address. Michael Dano, 575 Chester Fight. Um, I don't have such a prepared speech like she does, but I also am very vocal to opposition of what's going on in this uh, school district. Um, I don't have somebody in the high school, I have somebody in the elementary schools, but I see even down to elementary schools, I mean, it's obvious that these kids are lashing out, they're doing stuff, they're, I mean, because they're not having normalcy. This normalcy, has, I mean, all of Pennsylvania, we don't have COVID laws. We have no mandates. Yes, there is a mandate by the public health department. If you guys watch that today, it doesn't look good for the health department. It looked better for us. So we, we as parents should have the decision if we want to put masks on our kids or not. Because this is a medical device. This is just, it's not just something. It's, it's something that causes, you know, like somebody was quoting to me today, suicide rates are up, overdose rates are up, drug use is up for kids, uh, violence is up for kids. It has more effects than just putting something on it. I have an autistic daughter, and I'm crushed by this school board to tell me that that is not an acceptable medical condition for an exemption. My daughter has, you know, she has Hypen's disease. She has, uh, we just found out she has OCD and she has anxiety. You know, she has sensory issues. But to have to fight with, and I agree with what she said, I've put my questions out there and now they've been sitting for months. Or uh, let me say a month at least. So with back and forth with lawyers, back and forth with solicitors, I mean, we should be able to come to you guys and, and as parents, you guys all see what's going on in this town. I mean, the town, explain to little Timmy why he's got to go to school and then go to the pizza shop and don't have to wear a mask. I mean, it just, listen, I know this is, we're beating a dead horse here. 
I know, and listen, I'm, I'm not calling you guys out on it, but how much, how much federal aid did you guys get promised for this? How much federal aid did you guys get promised to push this mandate? And from what I understand, quoting the Senate hearing with the public health department, with the public, uh, the head of you guys, the funding would never get pulled back. So to, to, to tell us that, you know, federal funding is the reason, you know, you're afraid that you're going to lose your funding. You're not going to lose your funding. It's already been, it's already been quoted. It's already in the books. It's already in the Senate. So, I mean, Something's got to give here. We got to we got to come as a community together and figure this out. I mean, if it's if it's COVID cases, okay, publicize it. Publicize where the cases are. Publicize how much of it. Tell me that the school board sees uh, Chester County's website. I want to see what you guys see. I mean, it should be. I should. If I have to put in a right to know request, I'm going to do it to put a right to know request in to see exactly what, I mean, what are the parameters? What is, what is too much? What is too little? What is, are we, are we including uh, nursing homes? Because healthcare facilities, nursing homes, they're a big part of the numbers in Delaware County. So to tell me that, you know, we're in a high transmission area, okay, well, again, is it the nursing homes? Is it the healthcare facilities? You know, When's the last time we checked these numbers? Listen, I know you guys want to follow the mandate because the, the, but the mandate also, right now, from what I understand and what I'm seeing and what I'm interpreting, is it's something that we, as you guys, have more say so than the public, the, the, the officials up there. That public health department, you guys have the say so over her. So. We, we would like to see it come together and, and figure this out. We, we, we would like more transparency. We would like more transparency from you guys to tell us why. To I mean, like I said, I don't wear a mask anywhere, anywhere. And I came in here because I, 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 first of all, I didn't see till last minute that you guys were doing an in-person meeting because I, as I was reading it, it went uh, you know, online, online, and all of a sudden I, I saw the, the in-person meeting. But, you know, it's like we need, we need more transparency and we need more communications. Like she said, we need, we need more answers. Just to tell us this is the way it is, that don't fly. I mean, this, that causes kids to act out. That causes, you know, football games to go awry. I mean, look at this. This stuff is getting way too close to home. It's, I mean, it's down in Academy Park, it's down here now. I heard it's in Kenneth <clears throat> Elementary today. I mean, how much more do we need? Do we need somebody to like, die in the school before we actually take notice of what's going on? This is, this is important. I mean, you, kids want norms. They have to express themselves. And by expressing themselves, hey, listen, I can express myself all day long. But my autistic daughter needs to see your face, needs to see your expressions, needs to see what you're saying because she learns from watching. And she wouldn't learn nothing right here. So thanks for letting me speak and hopefully we can come to a conclusion to this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael. Daniel. D-A-I-N-O. I'm sorry. That's it. No, that's fine. <clears throat> if I could just stay. Mr. Mr. Dana, nobody, believe me, nobody wants to get back to normalcy, like more so than this district and this board. Right. Uh, believe me, I'm telling you from my heart, uh, okay. nobody wants to get back to where we were. But at the same time, you know, anything that we do or as a board or this district, believe me, we're doing it. Whether it's right or wrong, because okay. I, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but we're doing it with safety in mind for our kids, for our, you know our students, our administrators, our staff. You, you know, I hear you. I'll be the first one to say I don't wear a mask nowhere either. Right. I can't stand them. Right. You, you know. So what's the? But that's that? just me. Right. I'm only one member. Right. You know, and. <laughs> But I don't know whether that's right. I don't know whether that's wrong. 
But I do know one thing. This district, anything that we do, we're doing it for our district, for our children, for our staff. And we're trying to move forward in a safe way. You know, and believe me, we are trying to get back where everybody feels we should be. And we, we are. I know we are moving towards that. And I wish it was a little faster, but I promise you, we will get there. It's just, a, you know, so it may not be fast enough, you know, for some people than others, and, but we are working towards that. But it, just, just keep in mind, please, anything that this board or district does is always with the best interest of our children and our staff and our administrators as a whole. You know, and if I, that's the only thing I can say to you, sir. Right. I know you guys don't, don't uh, yeah. have dialogue back and forth, but yeah. I mean, on that note, that what you just said, okay, if that's the case, be more transparent about what the parameters are, what, what you, you know, it's this amount of cases, okay? That's right. Now we know. Now we know if we're at that many cases, then we're shot. You know, if, if, if it's under that many cases, then we're good. We can take them off and we can go home. You know, right. have a. We will uh, have a discussion on that. Right, thank you. Get, get that, see if we can get it on the website. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments, Mr. Uh, unless there's anybody else from the public that wants to speak, no. And. Uh, Hopefully I didn't speak out of turn. You're the boss. You know, I just, <laughs> I just want everybody to know, like, safety is our main thing for our community. Mm -hmm. so. All right, moving on to uh, number five, Mr. Evans. Motion 5.1, that the following minutes of the regular meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors held on September 15th, 2021, be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next up, we will hear from our solicitor, Mr. Rubio. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Phelps, uh, Superintendent Riley, and, and board members, as well as members of the public. Um, I will try in my report to, to identify just a few of the topics that were discussed from a legal perspective. Um, and, and those things are out there. The first thing that I would like to refute, I have read the, I have read the conclusions, I have read the thoughts and the theories behind it that, that districts are taking mask mandates because they are receiving federal dollars. Mr. Phelps just answered that question. Inaccurate, 100%. 100% has nothing to do with that. Prior to the governor's, the governor requesting the secretary, acting secretary of health to enter into some form of health mandate, we roll back to the primary, okay? At that point, there were two questions on the primary with regard to the public's ability or the General Assembly's ability to remove any individual's ability to enact emergency orders and allow them to stay for unlimited periods of time. That passed. The, the, that, that question passed the primary for the voters. After that, the emergencies were abolished. Some people have thought that everything that was said in the removal of the initial act applied to school districts. The removal of that act, some things the legislature allowed to remain in place. They took some things out. One of the things that was specifically excluded from a number of things were school districts. The language that included them was changed they are specifically excluded. That's why they're not in. They might not say but school districts, and while I don't exactly recall the law, nor did I bring it here this evening, I am aware of PSBA and the legislative push to remove school districts from that, number one. Number two, subsequent to that, I would posit to you 
that during the period of time uh, between the removal of that, that there were conversations on how, if there were additional spikes, how, they, how there was going to be a response with the inability to have these orders in place anymore. So there's no, again, I would suggest to you, logic would tell you that the governor and the health department, those folks, the state department of health, and those folks, most likely reviewed, researched, and determined if there was something that happened, a way that they could proceed forward. So prior to that, for Interborough School District, prior to those things happening, or while the Secretary of Health and officials were reviewing it. It was summer, mask mandates were lifted, very little Delta variant in, especially in this area. Let's discuss human nature to be very frank. What happened yesterday is not something we wanna think about, especially this type of stuff, and we're gonna go right to tomorrow. Everybody wants to get back to normal, 100%, okay? We were left, Interborough School District, every school district in Delaware County, to look to their health department. The health department, that's, that's who controls Delaware County school districts with regard to health issues. The county has no health department. Last year, Chester County and Delaware County partnered together. County Council partnered with those folks. There were some benefits that came with it, okay? Um, one of those benefits was access to data. Access to data, exactly what Mr. Dano spoke of a few moments ago. Okay, data that went down to the school district level that allowed folks to be able to say, okay, um, when Ms. Ferris mentioned, and I think it was Ms. Ms. Ferris, I think you mentioned a, a district or two a mile up the road or something along those lines. It, Am I, yes. Okay. Ms. Mm -hmm. okay. You would have this data to be able to determine whether you, who was hot and who wasn't. Okay. It happened last year. You know, there were districts in the western part of the country that were hot, and others that are counter to logic with more people, more spaces, less air conditioning, less open space that were a little cooler. So you had that, and it allowed districts to make decisions. We had, with, without that data, and Chester County does not have that data either because their health department wasn't going to engage in this again because that's what they became. They became the mask police. And as you're aware, no one wants to do that. No one. Zero. So they were left to that. So the law at the time in, say, mid-August, CDC comes out with guidance. They change their guidance a couple of times, okay? The law, we look to our health department. In the absence of a health department, we look to the state health department. State health department said, we recommend take a look, not do what CDC says, take a look at what CDC says. It was just a link to the CDC website this is what the CDC says. CDC says, we recommend. Some districts in Delaware County took a we recommend vote. Some districts in Delaware County took a partial mask vote, trying to look at some science that they had. Some districts took a full mask vote. You had all types of variations prior to the governor's or the acting secretary's mandate. Stopping to talk about that for just one moment. There is not a soul on this board that is an epidemiologist. Not a soul that's, I don't believe anyone's a doctor. I have no idea whether these folks may be married to physicians, okay? If there's an issue in this school district that takes place, and there's a construction issue of sort, and we end up in a dispute, I'm going to hire a construction expert. That construction expert's going to come in and help us so that I can then provide guidance. There's a curriculum issue. Uh, Mrs. Riley is going to have curriculum advisors, people that are going to provide you with guidance. I would submit to you there's no guidance in Pennsylvania. 
forward nine lay people. Um, everyone ran away from this issue. There is no guidance. Okay, we our discussions about the virus are as good as yours, sir. They they are as well read as some people may be. You may be better read than all of us. Okay, all of those things happen. So up to that acting secretary's mandate, it was a local decision. And I would submit to you it was a local decision that should have not been left. There should have, if, it, if you were leaving us a local decision, then the, then the state should have provided us with guidance, data, the data we're talking about. This, not whatever these nine folks think, shouldn't be that. That was not in place. After that, the acting secretary of health put the mask mandate in, based on a 1955 or 1959 statute. Okay. At that point, there were discussions about: Is this the law? Is this not the law? What is this? Okay. Most folks, PSBA, most solicitors that I have spoken to and myself have concluded that that currently is the law. What happens after that? Okay. Quick example. How, we all see folks uh, protesting the law or protesting something. A silent protest, they get picked up, they get arrested, and then, or they get a citation, arrested is the wrong word, they get a citation, and they then get to exercise their right in the conversation that takes place afterwards. Okay? So the litigation that I'm sure that you said you were watching, you were referring, that is what is going to guide us as we move forward. The case that is most likely going to provide us with answers is the case uh, that is, I think the initials are JW versus the Acting Secretary of Health, Allison B. It's a Commonwealth Court case. You can Google it. Oral arguments were today. So the question about when those recommendations come out will. Now, everything that folks have said, that you have said today, and you have said today, and other folks have stated, read, I've seen comments posted, <coughs> may be correct. You may get a ruling that says this, that this acting Secretary of Health had no basis to do that. That may occur, no question about it. You may get a mixed ruling, you may get something in between, but that's gonna be the guidance for the period of time. If that ruling is appealed immediately to the Supreme Court, if the mask mandate is, is overruled and that's appealed to the Supreme Court, it will, you know, if there is not a stay, then that's the law and then it comes back to this board to decide. Please mind you, this board is then again deciding with not a lot of real information to them, okay? Then it would be decided by the Supreme Court. So all of the things that you have said or that folks have said with regard to this not being a law may ultimately be borne out, but it is now. And the entities that this district has to answer to, the Pennsylvania Department of uh, Education, and then the cabinet and the legislature, okay? did correspond with this board and clearly indicated to everyone, including myself and the guidance I provide, that it is their interpretation that this is the law. And were they heavy handed in their conversation? Absolutely they were. They were 100%. They are in generally the boss. These folks are volunteers that come up here for this. They are covered by insurance for actions they take. When they are told by the Department of Education that if you enact a policy different from this and someone catches COVID and on God forbid passes away, and I know the God forbid argument, listen, I'm not telling you I agree with the God forbid argument, but if that occurs and they are threatened with a lack of insurance and personal liability, I am absolutely providing these folks the advice that they stay the course until they are guided otherwise. I would provide every one of you in this audience that advice every day and twice on Sunday. 
So there are a lot of things coming. That's a long-winded way to say it. I felt it was appropriate to address that topic and everyone here so they could understand that, yes, there should be some changes coming. There should be some litigation. I believe that that is the case, that they do that. You hear very non-legal terms like the court punted the ball, okay? I can respond to you with a non-legal term as well. That meant they were afraid to tackle an issue and didn't want to do it, okay? It's not right, it's not what you want to see, but it happens at times. Hopefully, this isn't it. The other federal cases that were brought, both by folks that demanded more masking and folks that demanded less masking, the, every ball was punted. Uh, with no decisions being made. Hopefully this is the case that makes those. The one thing I do point out to you uh, and to everyone in the public is item number 17 is a motion by this board to request uh, to request county council if they are able. No one is saying that this is something that was withheld from them. This is a request saying to them that if you are able to get this data for us, please do so. Why? Because I believe it could ultimately come back to a decision making for this board. And the amount of medical advice that we have is zero. There is no community doctor here who is coming in here and willing to put their practice on the line to tell Interborough School Board, no, nah, you don't have to mask. They're, they're just not. So those are the steps. Please keep those things in mind. Um, places do things differently. Districts do things differently. The things that I have communicated the best was to try your best. Mrs. Ms. Ferris, you are correct. Consistency is something that we need to strive for. Logic helps, but logic in this entire situation is something that has been long gone in the conversation. So as we go through those things, that's what we're looking at. Our office, I participated in a round table with PSBA. I'm one of their statewide officers. I, 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 am, I am up to speed and up to date on this topic so that I can provide the guidance to the board um, and allow them to do that. So in addition to all of the tax, uh, so in addition to all of the uh, Settlements for the tax matters, as well as item number, uh, there is a settlement on here in a case that was, uh, item number 20, is a settlement with a personal injury case. This was uh, an employee of ours, or, or an individual, I'm not exactly sure of the classification, but a, an employee uh, of someone, either a contractor or, or ours, injured themselves on the job. When you injure yourself on the job, there is no finding of fault. All the individual has to indicate is that they, they were injured, this person was injured, they were on workers' comp. When you are on workers' comp, if you also bring another action, what this person did, you then are able to make a claim, but you have to pay workers' comp back first. This person was on workers' comp, with a total lien, meaning the cost of $34,000. The final settlement was $40,000. Uh, that should be indicative to you of the real value of the claim, which is minimal in nature, which is why it was concluded, and it was concluded with district insurance company. That's a very long-winded solicitor's report. I hope to never give one like that again, but thank you. <laughs> thank you for your Thank you, Mr. Rubik. Here, have a little over there, sir. All right. Yeah. Your mask. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, now, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Finance, motion 7.1 that the Treasurer's report for the month ending September 30th, 2021, be approved. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Rose. Motion 7.2, the fund disbursements in the amount of $7,991,065.57 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Uh, number eight correspondence, Mr. Evans. None? There is none. We're right on to uh, number nine, committee reports. First up, we'll have uh, 9.1 uh, 
Mr. Chavone, finance. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. The Finance Committee met on October 4th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The major item on the agenda was the financing for the high school, the potential high school renovation project. I just want to quickly highlight where our finances stand right now, according to um, our bond council. We have an A credit rating. Our current, current fund balance is $3.7 million. Now, um, at that meeting, we also discussed that our audit is coming back. It's going to be started and probably finished around December. When that audit is done, you know, we may see an increase in our fund balance as well as an increase in our credit rating, which will fluctuate some of the numbers in terms of our borrowing capacity and you know, interest rates. So our bond council presented three options for the potential high school renovation projects. All three options included a three year of borrowing so that we could um, decrease the amount that we need if you know, the first two years um, go under budget. So it's a three year borrowing plan. Option one was um, if we plan to do $50 million worth of renovations, which included mostly behind the wall um, renovations, such as mechanical, electrical, HVAC, um, HVAC and plumbing. Uh, if we chose option one, it would require our debt service to increase about $200,000 for the next eight years. This increase would flatten out at $5.4 million and then begin to decline towards the end of the, the, the bond years. Option two was $63 million in borrowing. That's mechanical, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, all the behind the scenes stuff, and then basically like a building facelift with inside, maybe reframing some of the classrooms and updating the, the look inside a little bit. That would require the debt service to increase $200,000 for each year for the next 11 years. Um, and that would, um, the, it would increase to about $6 million. Option three was $70 million, and that includes the mechanical, HVAC, electrical, and basically doing a transformation of the high school, possibly adding a cafeteria, um, updating the front facade of the building, adding administrative buildings, um, adding science labs, so, and updating the classrooms as well, and updating the auditorium um, as well. So it's, it's more of a transformational approach with the $70 million. That, that um, option, again, we would require, it would require the debt service to increase $200,000 for the next 11 years. Um, and, the, the, and this option is the one that the board is leaning towards. It's an agenda item on tonight. Um, again, it, it's the transformational um, approach. It really will rejuvenate the high school and allow um, us to you know, really transform what type of learning happens at the high school. So we're excited about that. Um, and again, it's, we're in the very early stages of that, and there's a lot of steps to go forward. But um, that, those are the general finances that uh, our bond council presented. Uh, we do have soft costs budgeted in that $70 million, and also inflationary costs um, because of the, the price of uh, resources now. So that's about $8 million. That, that it's, we think that that may come down a substantial amount because the cost of things are so expensive right now. So in three years, it may not be that. We may be able to save some money there. Um, also, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I'm optimistic about our financial position in the next couple of months because of the audit. Um, I think we could see potentially our bond or our credit rating increase, which will help us borrow at a cheaper cost. And I also think our fund balance is going to possibly increase a, a substantial amount that the $200,000 that I'm mentioning right there, we may be able to allocate money from our fund balance. So it will in all, the taxpayers wouldn't see any impact um, immediately. So I think that's, uh, that's a really good, uh, good position that we're in to move forward with this project. Thank you, Mr. Pulse. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Okay, uh, next up, 9.2. Uh, legislative finance report. Right back up there. Thanks, Mr. Pulse. Uh, just real quick, PSBA submitted comments to the Independent Regulatory Review Commission and the PA Department of Education supporting PE's proposed regulations for charter and cyber charter schools as a step in the right direction. Basically, the regulations are um, trying to push charter schools and cyber charter schools to have more oversight and transparency that school districts are required to do. We have to, you know, have we have a limit on our, what our fund balance is. Cyber charters and charter schools do not. 
So uh, the, they're just trying to go in the right direction to put more oversight and transparency on cyber charter schools. So that basically, oh, and one other thing, the SBA has a new initiative called the Next Step Campaign to try to bring local chamber of commerce and county officials into the conversation about charter reform. Um, and that is it. Thank you, Mr. All right, next up, 9.3, Delaware County Community College, Mr. Goldberg. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, uh, as, uh, as school board uh, members know, I sent out an email uh, yesterday letting everyone know there is going to be a, uh, a school board liaison meeting tomorrow, a virtual meeting uh, with the Delaware County Community College. Since we are a, um, a uh, contributing uh, entity to Delaware County Community College, we are invited, all the school board members are invited, along with the superintendent to attend that. I will be, uh, I will be attending that. Uh, getting an update on what's going on with uh, Delaware County Community College, uh, not only what, what's going on at the Prendergast building, but also uh, other programs that they're working on right now. And, uh, and I'm sure that there may be some information coming, depending upon uh, what is uh, passed in the, uh, in the Senate and the House, uh, possibly there could be a, a pretty significant impact to the community colleges uh, throughout the country. So. Uh, we'll see see what happens with that. Thank you, Mr. Goldsberg. Yes. Moving on to 9.4 Delaware County Intermediate Unit, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. The Delaware County Intermediate Unit's meeting with the Board of Directors met on October 6, 2021. Approve a contract with William Penn School District for the DCI to provide leadership team training. Also approved the contract between DCI and the School District of Haverford Township for the DCI to provide special education teaching coaching, teacher coaching. Appro approved a contract with Radnor Township School District to, for the DCI to provide up to 500 hours of physical evaluation services. Approved a contract with Chichester School District for the DCI to provide Chichester with audit and related professional development and multi-tier system support, approve a contract with, between the DCI and the Southeast Delco School District for the DCI to provide an audit social and emotional learning initiatives, approve to recommend the Upper Darby School District to uh, the board to approve Tom Brown and reappoint Tracy Korowski to the Delaware County Vocational Technical Authority Board, each with a five-year term. Our next school board, our next DCI board of directors meeting is November 3rd, 2021 at 645. That's all I have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Harvey. All right, next up, 9.5, Capital Improvement Act Committee, Mr. Evans. Okay, the Capital Improvement Committee hasn't met since uh, prior to the last board meeting, but we will talk about Motion 19. As Mr. Chabon uh, weighed in on all the finance involved in this uh, upcoming proposed project, um, it is an opportunity, uh, Motion 19 provides an opportunity for us to really transform this, the high school um, into a next generation facility. Uh, it includes uh, improvements to the auditorium, a cafeteria addition, uh, science uh, labs and music room additions, a new facade, and uh, several other improvements throughout the building along with, as Justin said, a replacement of, much, a much needed replacement of the mecha mechanical facilities that uh, support the high school. Everything here is approximately, or everything at the high school is approximately 50 years old. And we realized that uh, at the time, building the new high school was probably a significant burden on the community then. Uh, and it has gotten us to this point where, you know, the building lasted for 50 years, but relatively speaking, this is probably as big of a project as that was 50 years ago for the community. We do realize it does uh, create long-term debt, but it'll, it'll provide, uh, as I said, next generation type facility for our students to keep up with the learning practices that are, uh, going on throughout the state and throughout the country. So it's a great opportunity for us to, to create something uh, transformational on that spot. Uh, I look forward to that vote. Um, and 
when it comes time, this is this vote. This motion is just to allow Dewey Engineering and KCBA Architects to start producing a more detailed conceptual design. The con concepts that they have come up with thus far are, um, like I said, transformational. And um, once they get into that next step, they'll be inviting stakeholders from the community, from the high school, from the staff, and from the board to weigh in on uh, how those concepts get fleshed out. So, uh, like I said, I look forward to that uh, that motion 19 tonight. Otherwise, uh, the Capital Improvement Committee will be meeting next Tuesday. Is that correct, Mrs. Riley? Tuesday, the Yes, Tuesday, October 26th. October, I'm sorry. Tuesday, October 26th, to discuss some of the improvements we're going to make to the recently purchased church <coughs> property uh, adjacent to Glen Oldham School. It, uh, the plan is to move some of our administrative offices over to that facility, but it's going to take some work. That money is already in our uh, capital funding program. They actually have already started some abatement work over there, and um, as soon as the abatement is complete, we'll start talking about how that facility is going to get uh, re, uh, refurbished and reorganized. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Evans. At this time, our uh, student representatives can be excused. Thank you both, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Moving on to uh, number 10 there, Mr. Evans. On the office of personnel, motion is defined personnel action to be approved. Starting with 10.1 on page 2 and going to 10.9 on page 7. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Just for comments, Mr. Phelps. Yes, Mr. As Mr. Cascolo mentioned at our um, our work session or workshop meeting on Monday night, um, in terms of our teaching positions, all we're doing good in filling those. If anyone in the public is on a of us, we will hire you. And if anyone wants to sub, we will hire you. We, which, which say, you must have your CDL to drive the bus, but we need van drivers as well. So we will, if you want to be a sub or want to drive a van or a bus, please sign up. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schubert. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to carry 9 0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. For the Office of Curriculum and Instruction, motion 11.1 to 11.7 on page 7. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to carry 9 0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion number 12 from the Office of Special Education and Pupil Services. Motion that the following items be approved 12.1 to 12.10 on page 8. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9 to 0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 13 for the Office of Technology. Motion is the following items be approved 13.1 to 13.6. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9 0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Facilities, uh, motion 14 that the board. The school director approved the change order from accredited environmental technologies to include an additional property located at 516th Avenue, Interboro High School, and the approved hazmat regulated design and quality assurance monitoring for kindergarten and this admin property at 900 Washington Avenue in an amount not to exceed $2,505 to be paid from 2020 bond funds. Original contract board approved on 217 2021. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Comment? Yes, Mr. Yeah, that, that is the additional abatement work that we, I just spoke of. Thank you, Mr. Uh, any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Finance, motion 15. 
one to fifteen five that the following items be approved. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Your comments, Bob? Yes, Mr. Schumacher. Just again for members of the public, um, th these typically are not on our agenda, but due to the reassessment, um, countywide reassessment, um, taxpayers, you know, we've been seeing more appeals and um, just for future, we would probably see more of these on our agenda, but that is most, mostly due to the countywide reassessment. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, we say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9 0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 16 is the Board of School Director to approve the Delaware County Intermediate Unit Title III Consortium Memorandum of Understanding for the 2021 2022 school year. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9 0. Next motion, Mr. Motion 17, the four school directors urge our elected officials on the Delaware County Council to provide 2021-2022 school district level data on transmission level data as previously provided during the 2020-2021 school year. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Mr. President, if I may uh, briefly comment just yes. again Mr. on Mr. this topic to make sure that everyone is aware. This is a request basically a get to the front of the line type of request. You have county council who recently hired an epidemiologist uh, is able to get this material quicker as a result of our asking prior to the effective date of the health department. That is the goal. The goal was to make sure that county officials were aware that this data is very helpful to the school districts. If the burden make a choice about masking then comes back to individual districts everybody wants to do it with some logic based on things that mr. Dano said and Ms. Ferris said and many other members of the public have said this is not County Council not giving us something this is our asking for when they're able to get it just make sure we're first in line and you understand the uh, importance of it to districts Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Any other uh, comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9 0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 18 that the Board of School Directors approve the addendum to the Inverse School District 2021 2022 Health and Safety Plan for the Test to Stay program to expand our mitigation efforts to support in person learning. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 19, that the Board of School Directors authorize Dewey Engineering and KCBA Architects to begin the design, I'm sorry, to begin the design for a renovation and additions project at the Interbar High School. The proposed project scope includes replacement of the HVA system, HVAC system, including mechanical and construction upgrades, an expanded auditorium and additions for classroom spaces, including science labs, administration offices, cafeteria, and kitchen. The total cost of the proposed project, including construction contingency costs and soft costs, is not to exceed seventy million two hundred thousand to be paid from future bond issuances. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Comment? Yes, Mr. Evans. Just again, like I said, I know uh, when this high school was built, it was a burden for the community. And again, this project will put a fair burden on the community. And that's why they're invited as, as stakeholders and interested parties to participate in the development of the design and making sure we drill down to the needs and wants of the community as well as the administration and staff. Thank you, Mr. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 20, that the board approve the agreement to fully settle the personal injury matter of Lamotra versus Inverse School District, Delaware County Court of Common Pleas, number 2019 
in the amount of $40,000 to be covered by insurance dollar and authorize the board president and secretary to execute the agreement on behalf of the district. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Do we have uh, any old business? Okay, at this time we will now hear from our superintendent, Ms. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, the Interborough Board of School Directors and Administrators would like to congratulate the 2020 Hall of Fame recipients. These inductees were announced at the homecoming game on Friday evening. Ms. Yolanda Rydell Bankston, Interborough High School Class of 1986. Mr. Pat Barr, Interborough High School Class of 1979. Mr. Jim Simpkins, Interborough High School Class of 1982. And Mr. Alan Hostetter, Interborough High School staff member for 35 years. I would like to thank the Interborough Alumni and the Hall of Fame Committee for the time they have dedicated to supporting the district and continuing the Hall of Fame tradition. I look forward, hopefully this year, for the Hall of Fame events to take place uh, in the spring. Also, Interborough Theater, I know our student representatives announced it, this, but the Interborough Theater is proudly presenting Please Check, which is a comedy uh, for their fall performance. Tickets will be on sale starting in October, uh, starting October 27th. Shows are running from November 11th through the 13th. For tickets and more information, please visit uh, www.interborotheater.com. Uh, I would also like to thank the board for the time that they have put into making this decision to proceed with a renovation project at the high school. We have been working on this for many, many months, uh, and our board members here have put in a lot of time to really um, review the information that we have provided to them. They have committed to reviewing all the documents, looking at the financing, knowing, um, as Mr. Evans said, that this will put some burden back onto the taxpayers. But as many of you know, and some more than others, um, that the high school is in need of a renovation project, um, and it is time. Um, I believe that this is a commitment that will positively affect our students and our staff, um, and I really look forward to the collaboration of all of our stakeholders in determining um, what, this, what our high school will look like in the next couple of years. It's very exciting. Um, we have never taken on this type of a project, but I am very confident in the engineers. Um, I am confident in the architects and the administrative team um, and, you know, everyone else that is committed to making this happen. So it's a very exciting time uh, and um, I'm hoping that we'll have a lot of community members and stakeholders who are willing to commit and be, a, you know, an active participant in this project. So thank you to the board. Um, you know, for, for making this decision tonight. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Uh, do we have any comments from any board members? Mr. Yes, Mr. Evans, or Mr. Harris. Did you have something to say? No, sir. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, congratulate Sydney Kane from Prospect Park. She made it on a special Halloween edition of the Kids Baking Championship last night. It was really great. She made this really cool pumpkin patch cake, and it was Making me hungry as hell watching it. <laughs> <laughs> she did a great job. She really represented uh, Interborough well. So, congratulations to Sydney Kane. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Any other? Yes, uh, Mr. Goldsparrow. Okay. Yeah. I'll be real quick. Yeah. I also, in, in addition to Mrs. Riley's um, comments about the high school renovation project, and, um, I'm, I'm thrilled with because the nine of us, you know, have worked really well together. The nine of us pushing for this, um, I think, you know, it, it speaks volumes of our commitment to the district as well as our commitment to working with each other. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to be part of the nine of us, you know, doing and taking on this um, undertaking. So I hope all nine of us are still here three years from now so that we can, uh, God willing, um, <laughs> we can see what, this, what the high school will look like. Right, Ms. Krajewski? Yes, Ms. <laughs> Mr. Goldsberg, did you have a comment? Thank you. Yes, uh, I, I wanted to thank Mr. Dano and Ms. Ferris for coming out and, uh, and taking part in the democratic process that we have here. Uh, and um, I, I just want, as a, as a teacher myself and as a parent of a student that goes to Norwood, um, I want you to know that masks are what are keeping kids in school because what what happens is if a student and, and as a teacher I get notification every day 
of a student contracting COVID. At the school that I teach at, and also as a parent at Norwood, I get notification also of students. And here's the thing, what happens with that is immediately contact tracing takes part, and, and especially for students that are in school. If students that were close by to them did not have masks on, that means that they're gonna to have to be quarantined for a much longer time. And the most important thing that we as a board feel is that students need to be in classrooms and be taught. And that's really what we want. That's the big reason why we are following the mask mandate because it keeps kids in school for more time. The worst thing that can happen is for students to not be able to be in school. Uh, because they're under quarantine or because they've contracted COVID. So that's the big reason why we're, we're doing that. And, and I'm thankful uh, that, um, that you were able to express yourself. And I hopefully you, uh, you got some answers and will get some answers to your questions and concerns. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Any other uh, comments from the board? Myself, um, uh, the project that we're getting involved in, I just want everybody to know, you know, we have a, a, a proactive board, not a reactive board. That's why we are going into this. We want, to, we want to be in front of the eight ball, not behind the eight ball. We're not saying that the buildings are falling around, or falling down around us, but uh, we want to make sure that they don't. We want to make sure everything is up to par. You know, we want to move into the next century here, as Mr. Evans stated, and be prepared for uh, the next generation of students, staffers and administrators, and hopefully I won't be here. But, <laughs> but uh, you know where we're coming from. And the last thing we want to do is put more burden on taxpayers. But uh, I will say we're very conservative as a board. We, uh, we do not overspend. We, our uh, financial guy, uh, Marty High School, he does every single number to make sure that we are getting the best prices, the best, the best deals, the best everything. So don't think for a second that uh, we're spending this money like we are making sure that we are getting the best bang for our buck. Okay, any other comments? Mr. Phelps, just to roll yes. over what you just said about getting the bang for our buck. Uh, in the next two months when we do our audit, I think we're going to, when we get the actual numbers, I think we're going to see, you know, that it's not going to be as much of a burden on the tax I, I really feel as though we're going to be in a nice financial spot where we can allocate some of our fund balance to offset that $200,000 annual increase that I mentioned in my, um, in my report. Thank you. Uh, please visit the Interborough School District website at www.interboroughsd.org for further information on meetings listed below. On Monday, November 1st, 2021, a Finance GBO Committee meeting will be held virtually at 7 p.m. The next work session of the Interborough Board of School Directors will be held virtually on Monday, November 15th, 2021. 7 p.m. and the next regular monthly public meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors will be held in person at the administration building on Wednesday, November 17, 2021 at 7 p.m. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.